This is the Ramondez RD3000 higher level OBD2 scan tool. Let's take it out of the box. And the box is a really nice case for everything with a go handle on it. Everything's all nicely packed up in there, so let's open the case. In the case, you get the user's guide. They give you the cable to connect the unit to your car, a USB cable, USB to mini USB for connecting the scan tool up to your computer. They give you a card reader here. There's a cap on there. When you take that off, you can insert a micro SD card and then it would plug into the USB port of your computer. And that's used for updating the scan tool itself, which is right here. They give you free lifetime upgrades on this tool. You'll notice on the bottom there is a micro USB port on the right. To the left of that is the micro SD card that's already installed in the unit. And on the top of it is the connector there that will interface with that cable to allow it to interface with your car. So what is this tool? What does it do? Well, this is an OBD2 scan tool. You can find a myriad of different OBD2 scan tools out there. And they're going to range in price from really cheap to super expensive. Which one do you need? Depends on what you need to do. First and foremost, this is going to do anything a cheap scan tool will do because this is a higher level one. So it'll do everything that any of the cheaper ones will do. It'll be able to read the codes for your check engine light out. It'll be able to erase the codes for your check engine light. It'll give you the live data from the engine to let you know how everything is doing, what all the sensors are reading. It can give you the IM readiness monitors to ensure that you're ready for inspection. But in addition to that, this can also test out different parts of the engine, transmission, the ABS brakes, and the SRS supplemental restraint system, otherwise known as airbags. And on top of that, it also has the provision for electronic parking brake reset, if you have a newer vehicle that has one of those, and also an oil light reset as well. Doesn't do us much good here, so let's go take this out to the car and see what it can do. So here we are with the tool hooked up to the car. I have the car running so it can show us some of the data that's in the system. And we're going to go over to OBD2. You can see that there are buttons over here. These F buttons can actually be programmed for various functions within. And of course you have your navigation pad there, a back button, OK, and a help button. We're just going to go ahead and press OK. And it says auto scan of protocols. So we'll just do auto scan. And just that quick, it comes up with Toyota, Lexus, Scion, or other. This is a Toyota. And just that fast, MIL status is your malfunction indicator light, colloquially known as your check engine light off. There are no codes. Monitor is NA. NA is not available or not active or you know doesn't count basically for monitors OK7 monitors INC INC for incomplete zero so that means that if you had a check engine light you can clear that and then hook this tool up and just that fast you can get this data here if you have any incomplete then your car would not be ready for inspection even if the check engine light was still off and at the bottom it shows you what to press. So OK is F1. So here's the F1 button. We'll press that. And now you can do the engine or automatic transmission. So we'll go ahead and do the engine. And now you have DTC, which is the first diagnostic trouble codes. Your IM readiness monitor. So that'll give you more in-depth detail on that. Since diagnostic trouble code's cleared, it's fine. So we'll go in there, and once again, it tells you everything here. Anything that says OK means that readiness monitor is complete. NA doesn't count. If you see INC, that means that it has not completed yet, and your car would not be ready for inspection. So this is more or less what a regular scan tool will do. We'll go into live data in here. It needs to load for just a moment. And we're going to go over and do a custom list. 
and I'm going to set some various values here. So with the appropriate ones checked off, it says OK is F3, so we'll press that. And here we are. So you can see the engine cooling temperature. We're just going to look at the value column, 192 degrees Fahrenheit. And the short-term fuel trim for bank one and bank two. This is a V6 engine, so it has two banks. And we can see we're hovering at 1.6. And the closer you have that number to zero, the better the engine is running. You'll see it'll fluctuate a little bit there. Your engine RPM right now is about very close to 600 RPM and if I rev that up a bit we're gonna see these numbers change live so there's your RPM up the fuel trim on each bank will change and now because we just added fuel to the engine you see it's in the negative because now there was excess fuel, so it's burning out whatever is left in there until everything settles back down, and then it'll either add or subtract just a little bit. Once again, the closer that number is to zero, it indicates the better the engine is running. And there's a whole host of all kinds of information here that you can see as I scroll down, probably 50, 60, maybe even more different sensors that this can get the data from as you see so we just came back to the top of the list you can look at the monitors on here as well so here's misfire cylinder one we'll hit that and it says there are no misfires whatsoever result is okay and then we can go to cylinder two that also is reading okay and cylinder three that reads okay and we can go through the list there so you can get a host of different information from this tool here's some other great information time since engine start so that would show you how long the engine's been running distance traveled while malfunction indicator light is activated number of warm-ups since diagnostic trouble codes cleared distance traveled since diagnostic trouble codes cleared etc back at the main screen this also has a cool function called auto VIN so I can go in there and it has automatic VIN acquisition that is of course if your vehicle is so equipped to do that when I press that there's the VIN obviously I've blocked that information out because that's none of your business we'll go ahead and continue and now it says the different types of vehicles it could be so this is a Toyota so we'll select that We'll choose Smart VIN. This is a North American car. With Smart Key, with VSC, and this is a Toyota Manufacturing Kentucky product. We'll hit that, and there is the information, including the VIN, once again. So once in there, we can go and do a quick scan. So we'll hit that. Engine, pass, no fault, ECT, electronically controlled transmission, pass, no fault, ABS, VSC, traction, pass, no fault, and SRS airbag, no fault. So here's more of the higher level stuff that I was talking about. Stoplight switch, that would be your brake pedal. Currently says off, so if I step on the brake, it goes to on parking brake switch that's off if I put the parking brake on that turns on shift lever position it says PN for park neutral if I go into reverse it shows R N will be PN and D for drive in the SRS system driver buckle switch currently says unset if I put the seat belt in, it says set. If I remove it, unset. So this is the type of information that this scan tool can give you. Like I showed before with the gear select lever and what gear it's in, you know, what the position of it is, that's all electronically controlled these days. Even though you might still have an actual lever that moves, it has to hit the appropriate switch and tell the computer, this is reading what the computer is seeing. 
So it doesn't matter really where that gear shift lever is as long as the computer is getting the signal. And if it's not, it could be as simple as the switch in the lever assembly, not telling that to the computer or possibly wiring to the computer from that switch. And then we can go over to maintenance as well. And you have EPB, electronic parking brake, or oil reset. Let's do that one. And now for this, you have to select the vehicle. So we're just gonna go down in the list back to Toyota. There it is there. And this is a Camry, so we'll select that. It's a 2007 XLE. And now, in the event your vehicle supports having a tool like this reset it, it will go ahead and have you press the appropriate button on here to reset it. For a car as old as this, where it doesn't have that, it will give you all of the information that you need what you need to do in order to reset the oil light. This may look complicated, but it's actually a very easy procedure. There's only a few lines here, really, and it only takes a couple of seconds, and most mechanics know most of the cars and how to do that, but for the average Joe who needs a good scan tool, this can tell you how to do it. You don't need your phone. You don't need to search. You don't need to get misinformation. This will give you the right stuff each and every time. So once again, this was the Ramondez RD3000 higher level OBD2 scan tool. If you'd like to purchase this item, I'll leave a link in the video description where you can find the item available for sale on Amazon. Thanks for watching. Make sure you click like, make sure you click subscribe, and take care. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.